Hi everyone, this is Caleb from Father Dyer, and here is your video for Luke chapter 5. I am coming to you from behind the drum set in my basement just to mix things up and to keep your attention. Since there's going to be 24 of these videos, we're going to try for different backgrounds and settings. So today we're doing this behind the drums. So in Luke chapter 5, Jesus begins his ministry with his followers. In chapter 4, Jesus was kind of doing ministry on his own, and now he is gathering followers who are doing ministry with him and also being impacted by his ministry. In verses 1 through 11, we see a famous episode where Jesus is with some fishermen, and he calls them to be his disciples. And this gets told differently in the different Gospels. One interesting anecdote that comes from this episode, the way Luke tells it, is Jesus gets into Peter's boat, which we'll see this throughout the story. Jesus sometimes just does stuff without maybe asking or caring about like protocol or manners. Jesus can get away with that. We can't always have good manners. And Jesus has this episode with the fishermen where they catch a bunch of fish and they didn't think they were going to. And after seeing this, Peter, the rock that will build the church, says this to Jesus in verse 8, Go away from me, for I am a sinful man. And Jesus doesn't buy it. Jesus is like, nah, super don't care. You're coming with me. I don't care how sinful you think you are. There's a lesson for us in that, in that if we ever think we're not good enough for Jesus, Jesus super doesn't buy our expenses. You can say, Jesus, I did this, or Jesus, I didn't do that. Jesus super doesn't care. Jesus always says to us, come and follow me, no matter who you are, who you aren't, what you've done or what you failed to do. In verses 12 through 16, we see Jesus do some healing. And there's a recurring theme that you encounter throughout the Gospels where Jesus does something for someone and then says, don't tell anyone about this, especially don't tell them that I did this. And Jesus does this in 14 where he says, go to the priest, do the things that the law of Moses says to do, but super don't bring up my name. Well, maybe the person does. And we see this about the Gospels where people are like, Jesus did this for me after Jesus said, don't say I did this for you. And because of that, more people come and follow Jesus. And that may be what Jesus was getting at. Be like, I can't do what I'm doing if all these people are always like around me doing stuff. But it works out in the end, obviously. And then in verse 16, because of the crowds and having to do stuff all the time, Jesus goes on retreat. It says he goes away to a deserted place to be by himself. And friends, here's the deal. If Jesus needs that, you and I need it too. If Jesus needs to get away and unplug and recharge and go on retreat and do Sabbath, we need to do that too. You, you and I are not exempt from that. Especially now during this year with pandemic and politics and everything else going on, do the things you need to do to get away, recharge, and get re-plugged into who you are and who God is. If Jesus does it, you should do it too. In verses 17 through 26, we hear another episode of healing. Now, I want to I want to say something here that just always needs to be said when we read these episodes of Scripture where Jesus heals someone and the topic of sins comes up. Because Jesus says to this person who gets lowered in on the mat, your sins are forgiven. And then the religious leaders are like, Jesus, you can't forgive sins. Only God can forgive sins. Blah, 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 blah. Jesus, what are you doing that? That's blasphemy. Blah, blah, blah. They get all grumpy and upset with Jesus. But something that always means to be said is that our sins, and we all have them, we all have them, myself included, our sins are not the cause of, you know, whatever physical ailments we may inherit in our lives. This person in this episode was not paralyzed because they sinned or someone else sinned. They were just paralyzed because they were paralyzed. And Jesus does not make that equation here and be like, I'm forgiving this person's sin and that's why they're healed. Jesus heals someone and forgives their sins. The two are completely separate. So don't get caught up in that theological dark pit where, oh, this person has some physical ailment that must be because they sinned. Not how it works in scripture, not how God works, not how it works in the real world. So just don't fall into that pit, okay? So after Jesus does that healing and tells the Pharisees, I can forgive sins, because that's kind of what I'm here to do. Verse 26 is interesting to look at where the people are amazed and in my translation, which is the NRSV, the New Revised Standard Version, they say, we have seen strange things. And they do that while they're glorifying God. And we see this theme 
throughout so many scenes in the Gospels where people don't understand what's going on, but they still praise God. You and I can do the same thing. May not understand everything that's going on, keep praising God. We can do that in any circumstances. The people here, amazed to say, this is strange, not stranger things, the show, we have seen strange things, but we're going to praise God anyway. You and I can do the same thing. In verses 27 through 31, Jesus calls a tax collector named Levi. And again, the religious leaders are like, oh my gosh, who is this guy? Like they say he's some prophet and some healer and some teacher. And yet he's sitting with people that he should know better not to sit with. He's sitting with tax collectors and sinners and all sorts of people you're not supposed to be with. And Jesus says, well, duh, that's what this whole deal is about. I'm here to call sinners to forgiveness, not tell the righteous people how great they are. And Jesus uses this great metaphor where he says, you don't go to the doctor if you're well, you go to the doctor if you're sick. And that's a great lesson for us as the church, that we're not a place where we've come and feel great about ourselves. We're a place where we come to be made better in the name of Jesus, where we bring our sins and try and have Jesus work on them with us, you know? And sometimes we don't project that very well. Sometimes we project this image of the church. We're like, oh, we have it all figured out. We should project the opposite image. We don't have it figured out, but we're trying to get closer to Jesus who does. And, you know, every sinner is welcome here at the church. We should try and project that image. Be like, all of us are messed up and trying to figure stuff out. So come join the party. You know, come join this group of sinners who's working on stuff. That's the image we should project. That we're a hospital, not a place where we just come and feel better about ourselves. In verses 33 through 39, um, there's this question about fasting. And then again, the religious leaders come and say, John's disciples fast, but why don't your disciples fast? And what Jesus says there is because they're celebrating something. Those people that I've gathered around me aren't fasting because they're celebrating something, because they're celebrating that me, Jesus, is here. There will be a time to fast, but it's not now. Now, Jesus isn't saying don't fast. Fasting is a very deep spiritual practice that's part of being Methodist. Um, we can talk more about that later or obviously send me questions about that if you want. Uh, but Jesus is saying right now, I just got started. So we're celebrating and we're doing work. We're not going to fast. And then Jesus gives this metaphor that can get a little confusing about cloth and patches on garments and wineskins. Now, I am not an expert in vino culture. I am not a sommelier. I don't know a whole lot about wine. Some of you might. Uh, but what Jesus is getting here is that you don't take new stuff and just patch it on or put it together with old stuff. If you're doing new stuff, you got to have new stuff to go with it. And what Jesus is really getting at here and talking about wineskins and talking about these patches is that when you encounter Jesus, there's no part of your life that should not be impacted by that. You shouldn't take Jesus and then try and patch Jesus onto the way you've always done things. Jesus is about making things new and about making us new people. It's a process, a transformation, a journey that we are on with Jesus. And so if we take old ways of doing things and try and patch Jesus on there, it's not going to work. Jesus isn't a patch that you can just sew on. Jesus is something that should touch every aspect of who we are and every aspect of our lives. Now, that's hard. When I read this passage today and was thinking about what I was going to say to you in these notes, I had like this moment where I was like, oh man, like that's hard. And I don't know if I'm up to it. And I don't know if I'm doing it. Just being honest with you here behind the drum set. It's a good place for honesty, by the way, behind the drum set. And the point is, that's Jesus's job. We can't fix ourselves. We can't make ourselves new. That's what Jesus does. We just let Jesus do his work and get out of our own way, set aside our egos, our agendas, our whatever, and let Jesus do the work that Jesus is going to do. And just come along for the ride and like those disciples, celebrate it. Be like, look what Jesus is doing. This is amazing. Are like the people who saw the you know the guy on the mat heel i don't get this but i'm gonna praise god it's strange and i don't get it so our takeaway from chapter five is the same thing it's been so far and is gonna be the rest of the chapters you know hashtag spoiler alert advent is about getting ready to answer the question how are you going to respond to jesus 
And here we see a couple different things. The religious leaders got all grumpy and went, what is Jesus doing? And other people were just like, Jesus is doing amazing things. And I'm going to celebrate it even though I don't get it. Your reaction may be like Peter at the very beginning of chapter 5, where you say, I want nothing to do with Jesus for whatever reason. And Jesus isn't going to buy it. I'll just tell you that right now. Whatever your excuse is for not wanting to get closer to Jesus and be a part of what Jesus is doing, Jesus doesn't buy it. He calls each and every one of us. And so as you go about this day and as you go about the rest of your Advent, always be thinking about that. How are you going to respond to Jesus? What story resonates with you as you think about that question here as we read the Gospel of Luke together? How are you going to respond to Jesus? All right, friends, we will see you tomorrow for Luke chapter 6. Take care. Peace out.